Americans hold dear values like democracy, freedom of speech, and diversity of opinion. Principles like these combine to make their country the freest in the world. It's not a selfish country either. They strive to uphold and spread these values worldwide. The USA defends democracy, fights authoritarianism, and ensures that no one, anywhere, is oppressed just for thinking differently. And that is why the United States of America is undoubtedly the most profound force for good that the world has ever known. And yet when the people of the world were polled on which country they considered the greatest threat to world peace, the USA came out far on top. Even citizens of friendly nations like Spain, Germany, and Australia chose America as the world's most dangerous nation, way ahead of the usual suspects that you hear about in the media, like North Korea and Iran. How could that possibly be? Could it perhaps be related to America invading Nicaragua in 1912, removing its democratically elected government, and then occupying the country for 21 years while running sham elections where only candidates approved by the USA were allowed to run? It might also have something to do with the USA threatening the Colombian government with invasion in 1928, demanding that they massacre workers who were exercising their legal right to strike. Afterwards, the US ambassador sent a gleeful telegram back home. I have the honor to report that the total number of strikers killed by the Colombian military exceeded 1,000. Or maybe it's because in 1941, the USA orchestrated a coup against the democratically elected government of Panama. Or because the president didn't want to let America build more military bases there. Coincidentally, the dictator that they installed in his place was very happy to oblige them. Or what about Italy in 1948, where the USA spent $65 million to influence that year's election, rather than, you know, just allowing democracy to function. It could also have been influenced by the USA orchestrating a coup against the democratically elected government of Iran in 1953, for the terrible crime of not giving the USA their oil fields. The dictator that they installed then enjoyed their unflinching support as he murdered and tortured tens of thousands of people for having different political views to his. There was also that whole thing in Guatemala just the next year. The United Fruit Company asked the US government to overthrow the democratically elected president just because he passed a few laws that gave workers more rights, like a day off on Sundays. And they did just that, orchestrating a coup that insulted a dictator, who then went on to murder and imprison tens of thousands for political dissent while enjoying the unwavering support of the USA. Yep, another one. But that's not all that happened in 1954. At the peace conference after Vietnam won its independence from French colonial rule, it was proposed that free and fair democratic elections were to be held two years later. Finally, the Vietnamese people would be allowed to elect their own representatives. All countries involved agreed, except the USA. Because, well, as President Dwight Eisenhower said, 80% of the population would have voted for the communist Ho Chi Minh. They later, of course, invaded Vietnam, resulting in millions of needless deaths. All because they knew that the Vietnamese people would have chosen a leader that they didn't approve of. It seems that democracy is only a value worth upholding when you like the election results. Or maybe it's related to when the USA backed a coup against the constitutional government of Brazil in 1964, and then happily supported the subsequent military dictatorship as they murdered, tortured, and imprisoned anyone with a different political opinion for 20 years more. And perhaps also when the USA invaded the Dominican Republic in 1965, all in order to defend a dictatorship that had taken power in a coup against rebels who were only trying to reinstall the democratically elected president. Then there's the 1965 to 1967 genocide in Indonesia of 500,000 people suspected of left-wing political beliefs, which the USA happily supported. Of course, they then also supported the dictator who was installed as a result, even as he ruled by decree for 30 years and banned all political opposition. Or, you know, the affair in 1971 in Bolivia, where the USA backed a military coup against the democratically elected president, and then supported the subsequent military dictatorship, while it murdered, tortured, and kidnapped pretty much everyone who opposed it. Or what about when the USA spent three years straight trying to overthrow the democratically elected government of Chile, backing multiple coup attempts and assassinating key politicians? And then once they succeeded, they backed a mass murdering, torturing military dictator who crushed all political opposition for two decades. Polls had shown that the democratically elected president was gaining popularity and might have even won another election. So the USA had to protect Chileans from themselves by ensuring that they couldn't vote for the wrong president. Again. Or perhaps when the USA backed another military coup in Argentina in 1976, which resulted in basically the same thing. US Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, 
was very happy to support their plan mass murder and oppression. We want you to succeed, he told them. The quicker you succeed, the better. In the end, 30,000 people were hunted down, tortured, and murdered for thinking differently to America's darling right-wing military dictatorship. Or maybe we could shed some light by going back to Guatemala for a second. In 1984, a report revealed that the US government had trained, armed, and supported the military of Guatemala with full knowledge that they had been committing a genocide against indigenous people. 160,000 people were murdered. Then there's always the USA funding and training right-wing death squads in Nicaragua and El Salvador in the 80s, and even continuing to fund them after Nicaragua had democratic elections. Iran-Contra and all that, you know? I suppose that could have something to do with it. Or perhaps when the USA backed a military coup against the democratically elected government of Haiti in 1991, just eight months after its new president had been chosen in its first ever free and fair elections. They completely destroyed the nation's free press and murdered tens of thousands just for their political opinions, which kind of seems like a common theme, doesn't it? Why don't we fast forward just a little bit to today? It might have something to do with the million odd dead in Iraq and Afghanistan, or maybe with drone strikes on weddings, or maybe with bombing Libya and turning it into the hub of modern day slavery, or maybe with the American backing of the dictatorial, theocratic regime of Saudi Arabia, and with helping it wage a war on nearby Yemen that has brought 13 million people to the brink of starvation, or maybe it's related to the situation in Palestine, where Israel, one of the world's worst human rights violators, enjoys the total support of the USA. Or perhaps it's something to do with the fact that the USA currently supports 73% of the world's dictatorships. Personally, I think it's probably all of those, together, combined. Just like Americans do, people worldwide also value democracy. In fact, they think that it would be swell if their democratically elected governments were not ousted in US-backed coups or US invasions. They'd also very much enjoy the freedom to hold different political opinions without being kidnapped, tortured, and murdered by US-backed dictatorships. How can the USA claim to value democracy and freedom when it's so willing to violate these supposedly sacred principles elsewhere. So next time you're wondering why it seems like so many people out there in the big old rest of the world don't like the USA, ask yourself, is it because they hate America's freedom, as President George W. Bush famously said, or is it because America hates theirs? I'm John Smith. Hey guys, John Smith, professional historian here. I am unfortunately contractually obligated to film an outro for this video. So I guess here I go. Bad Empanada wants me to tell you that if you like this video, you should maybe check out his other videos, subscribe to his channel, and maybe consider supporting him on Patreon or sending him a tip on Kofi. <laughs> Beggar. And now he'd like me to thank all of his patrons and especially his $10 plus patrons, whose names are written on a napkin apparently professional operation we've got here. Kira B, Lautaro, Audrin and Nate Fawn, self-critical Marxist-Leninist, leftist tech support, Inga Leonora, Key to the Fields, Nico, Industrial Robot, Matatesta, The Antifada, Cincione Brezcal, Alejandro, Lee Karatash Gullet, Diego A. Salvati, Amelia Sixus, Tija, Daniel S, BJ Hansen, Matt, Violet Rain, and Shantanav. So can I leave now? And also Jamie the commie, whose name I forgot to read out. Oops.